Visit sailright.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, this is Kenny with Sims Upholstery, and today we're going to show you how to make the knee pad and the bag for the panel on your door. Um, there was a pre-existing knee pad, and we need to extend that out about three inches, so we'll show you how to do that today. In this first chapter, we'll be patterning and cutting the back panel. Um, so my brother's knee actually goes out to about right here. So we're going to make this pad bigger and we're going to just show you how to make the custom bag and how to attach it and everything else today. And then these were just custom pins down here. And these are just automotive pins that you pull and these pop right out. You can get these at an automotive dealer if you want, or you can replace them with these, but he chose to do this. Okay, so you can see after we got it off here, they actually use like a little piece of Velcro to hold this in place so that you can put on your tabs. And there's actually even a tab on the inside of the bag there that we'll have to worry about as well. Okay, let's start making the bag. Okay, so for the back part here, the base, we're gonna use shelter right in black. This does have a right and a wrong side. This is the finished side that's up. So what I'm going to do here is basically trace the outline of this. But over here, I'm going to have to extend this. Basically, it's going to be three inches out from the cushion, not from this edge. If you go three inches out from this edge, you're going to have your grommet too far. So you need to go three inches from here. So we're just going to go three inches. and make a mark right there. And I can't go any more than three and a half high here. So this is gonna be the bottom part. So I'm just gonna make note of this. And it can't be any higher than three and a half inches. Okay, so based on that, what I'm gonna do is make a line. It's gonna make it a little bit more gradual. We'll trace all the way around the perimeter of our back panel marking any grommets or locations that are important. Just mark your grommets just so you know where they're at. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna come back over here to the end now, and I'm just gonna push this to this line. Okay, so I'm just gonna fix this a little bit for the tab. Don't my grommet. Erase this. Okay, so and that's basically what our base looks like. I'd kind of leave some marks here just so you know where your foam is going to stop. And I'm just going to fix this and make it a little bit more gradual here. Okay, so now we're just going to cut out our pattern. Okay, so now I'm actually going to make note of where my bag is going to be and just kind of make some marks here to reference. So I'm just going to make a mark here. there I'm just marking where the bag is going to stop and start and this one's going to be different because this is where three inches is and I've already got that marked for the most part okay so we are ready to now make the bags and the knee pad in this chapter we're going to show you how to create the zippered pouch okay so you're just going to have to keep in mind with your zipper that you can just actually trace this pattern because your fold back to finish is going to be fixed by the width of this zipper. So in other words, I don't have to cut this half an inch bigger to get this fold back because this number 10 zipper is going to give you enough room to fold this back. So we just need to trace this. So to flip it right side down because that's how the fabric is. 
try to line it up if you can. If it's square, yours may not be square. It may not be square, period. Okay, I'm just going to hold this down with my sandbag here. If we wanted to make this bag the exact same size, we actually would have needed to add a half inch all the way around the perimeter of this top for seam allowance. We forgot to do that, so our bag will actually be slightly smaller than the current one. If you'd like it to be the same size as the previous bag, you need to position it at least a half inch from the outside edges of your fabric before tracing it. Okay, so I just folded that up so I can get to this welt here. And then I'm just going to peek at where my zipper is going to at here. Actually down here. So I'm just going to find where the center of the zipper is. Make a mark there. And then the same thing with this side. Okay, so that's my first pad then. You can see where my zipper goes. You can actually just connect this zipper line. label it okay so on my bag here it's about an inch and three quarters to the center of the zipper following that straight line there so I'm just gonna correct this line just so it's straight because it is just a little bit off probably want to race but I don't know which one's the right one Okay, so now when I cut this, I'm actually going to cut this line out to make both sides of my zipper. We'll cut all the way around the perimeter of this panel and then cut down that zipper line we struck earlier. Okay, so I want to be a th do about a 3 8 fold here. So I'm just going to mark 3 8 on both sides here. Strike a line. Okay, so I've got my crease line, which is 3 eighths of an inch, and this is my actual line I'm going to fold to. You don't have to make both those lines, but I did. folding to that line. There's one side. This one we're just going to go three quarters of an inch down. Okay, we're ready to add our zipper now. <clears throat> okay, so, and then once again, I'm just gonna see what this is gonna look like with the zipper actually in there. Kenny has placed our panels and zipper onto our back plate to make sure he's happy with the positioning. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's put our zipper in. I'm gonna mark where this is gonna end, and I think I'm just gonna go past even a little bit. So that you have a little bit of extra zipper to mess with here. Okay, we're ready to put our zipper on. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna tape my panels to my zipper here. It's just quarter inch seam tape. When installing the zipper in our pouch, we want to make sure that the pronounced teeth are facing up. This is the right side of the zipper. Okay. 
We'll peel off the basting tape and baste our panels down directly on top of our seam stick. We'll repeat this process for the top portion of our zippered pocket. Okay, I'm ready to sew. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to about a four and a half millimeter-ish. Do a little reversing. We'll sew all the way down to the other end of our panel and do some reversing there as well. We'll repeat this same process on this side of the zipper. Now we're going to install our slider and slide it towards the end of the zipper and then just leave it there in that position. Now that our zipper slider is installed, we can trim off the excess we left on both sides of the zipper. Okay, so you're going to have to go a half an inch past your welt line up here. So it looks like we're stopping right at three inches. Okay, so I'm just going to measure around this. I'm just going to start from where the zipper is here because this will actually hold my tape in place. Okay, so you're going to want to add an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So we'll just go 37 and a half for now. So it's going to be three by 37 and a half. Okay, I'm just going to make my zero point for my band here. And then I need to go 37 and a half inches. So I'm going to make that mark. And then the three inch band. You can also just cut along this line too. You don't have to, if you're on a cutting board, you don't have to do this marking and then cutting with scissors. You can just cut it straight out with your rotary cutter. This three inch strip will be used for the boxing around the perimeter of our zippered bag. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm actually going to uh, make my own welt for this that goes around the edge. So you need an inch and a half for your welt. And the welt is actually going to be the same length, 37 and a half, as the band. That should be plenty. We'll cut out a strip of fabric for our piping and then show you what's next. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I'm overlapping with my welt, and I am. So we are good to put the welt on and then the boxing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm actually just gonna sew the welt directly to this since it's not necessarily hard. So you wanna leave mm, about that much, maybe three quarters of an inch, half an inch, hang over here so that you can tuck that back under that lip when you get to the end. It's a good thing that that was <laughs> where it was supposed to be. And then when I'm getting to a curve here, you're just going to sandwich it and clip to release some of the tension. By cutting it one and a half inches, that gives you your half inch seam allowance for your cording too. That's why we cut it at one and a half. You can buy welt from here that's already finished, but this is gonna save some time. Okay, so we're also actually gonna wanna put like a small piece for the zipper stop there. So I'm just cutting a scrap piece, folding it, sticking it under that part.
We're going to skip ahead to the zipper on the other end so we can give you a better idea of how we installed that zipper stop on the bottom side of the zipper. So I'm just going to tape this shut and show you exactly what's going on here, where you need to tape it and everything. Stick it. So basically it's going to be right here. So we can just put seam tape. kind of right down the middle-ish. I actually kind of want this a little bit closer so it deals with the overlap. Smush it right up against there. We'll continue sewing the piping onto the top plate around the perimeter and show you how we finish it off at the end. Okay, so you're going to find where your cording ends up. So I'm actually going to trim this back so I can smush the cording up against itself. You can feel the little hump of where the cording ends. Clip that off and clip your end off close to the same spot. We'll see what happens here. Yep, see how that's going to be tucked underneath? Just like that. Okay, and there's always a little bit of overhang. Just clip that off. There you go. So you could, so I could have went a half an inch out further towards the edges, to, but it doesn't really matter because I really kind of want it around this size anyways, just because they made it, the facing actually a bit bigger anyhow. So it really doesn't matter. You can actually make your bag whatever size you want. Okay, so you're gonna wanna leave about an inch there. Notice we're cutting notches in the corner to help it more easily take that curve. We're going to do this at all four corners. We'll sew this boxing onto the zippered top all the way around the perimeter and then show you how we finish it at the end. We'll stop about an inch before those panels overlap and then show you how to attach the two ends and sew down the rest of your boxing. Okay. So I'm actually just gonna reverse a little bit right there so that stops me from... Okay, so... Basically, if you fold this in half an inch and then take this 
and mark where you need to cut this. Now we'll cut the boxing on those two little snips we made previously. And we'll join both the panels together with the outside surfaces facing one another. We'll sew across the ends of the boxing, doing a little reversing at the beginning and the end. You can see I'm at the half inch there for my seam. Now we'll put it back in the sewing machine and start sewing to on top of this. the previous stitches, doing a little back tacking, a new and then we'll sew over the ends back. of the boxing we attached together and onto our previous stitches, and then do some reversing here to finish up. In this next chapter, we'll be creating the knee pad. Okay, so as you can see with the bag here, this is actually a little bit bigger than the actual size of it. That's why when I made this, I wanted to just fit this. But it appears that this is really about the same size. See that? Now that's the same size and this is not the same size. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to actually make this about a half an inch bigger, the pattern for it to make up for that. So, I'm going to lay this down here, first of all, and I think I'm just going to make like exactly where this is going to go. And just connect these two lines here. And then I'm just going to, these lines are actually custom, so We'll do something like that and give it a little bit of an arch, maybe. Okay. So now I have to go half an inch bigger than all this stuff. So I'm gonna make this line my zero point line. Oops. Okay, so after I've made this line, you're gonna have to remember this is gonna have to be flipped this way to get the front. So you can literally just fold this down here and I can make the arch afterwards. I just want to get the right measurement, I guess, here. going to be a half an inch past here. If you want to hold the ruler up to this and get every single half inch, be my guess. But I'm actually just going to eyeball this half inch. And then if I feel like it needs corrected in places, then I will correct it. Okay, so I actually went past some here, but there's my line. Make sure I'm okay there and there. Double and triple check. I'm okay there. I'm okay there. All right. Now that the line is struck, we'll continue tracing our half inch around the bottom of this side of the panel. Okay, so I'm gonna round these corners. Any place where there's a corner, this stuff looks okay here. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this out and we're gonna lay that on top of the other pattern and see if I need to adjust it anywhere.
We place the zipper portion of the bag along with the piece we just cut on top of our back plate to make sure the spacing works out correctly. Okay. So now if we flip this over. See how we're half an inch over everywhere except for here, which is our grommet's gonna be here in the end, so we don't wanna do that anyways. <clears throat> so it looks like we're good. Okay, so I'm just measuring around the perimeter here. So it looks like we'll be okay with like, we'll just do 40 and a half inches for the band and for the welt. Now we're gonna cut a three by 40 inch strip and a one and a half inch by 40 inch strip. The three inch strip is for the band or boxing and the one and a half inch strip is for our piping. Okay, so we're not gonna put a zipper in this. I'm just gonna sandwich this on here basically and just sew around the band because that's what they had done. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the welt portion now. You're just gonna put this on the same way that you put on the last welt. Make sure that you have extra. Let's put a little bit more extra there. The process to install this welting or piping onto this portion of the bag is the exact same as it was for the other one. We won't show all of this. Okay, so I'm just checking my seam allowance to make sure that I'm gonna land in the right spot. And you can see after I fold this under to the lines on both sides, or even anywhere, I'm landing right on the edge of that. So that's where I wanna be. So we're ready for our band. Okay, so once again, we're just gonna start about an inch in or so where you're gonna have your flap for your band. We'll sew the boxing or banding on all the way around our knee pad in the exact same way we did to the zippered pouch. Cutting notches at the corners and then using the exact same method to finish it at the end. Coming up, we'll be sewing our zippered pouch to the back panel. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make a line so I know where this part of the bag goes and also where my pad is gonna go. But I have the line for the pad, so I'm just gonna use these hash marks that I had from the very beginning and make a line here. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to take the band then, and I'm gonna run seam stick on this line and we'll remake this line as well. And that should tell me ab about where my band is gonna land. So I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be something like this stuck down. And you're not actually gonna, I'm probably only gonna use like a 3 8 stitch. It'll be closer to the edge. It may even be less than that so that it's gonna be folded over then. And that's how the beginning of it's gonna be attached. And then we're gonna do little clips here and it's gonna be sewn flat on the edges down here. Once again, you're gonna be really close to the edge because you're gonna put binding down there. There'll probably be a clip right there. And then this is actually folded under here and then top stitched up to here. Probably another clip and then flat again at the top, close to the edge so you can use the binding there. So that's the idea. So let's see if we can make it work. Okay, so I'm just gonna run basting tape here on the inside for now, and just this part, something like that. And then on the inside of this part too for the knee pad. Okay, so. Let's just see what we got here. See, I'm just kind of making sure that this is going to be somewhat centered here. Okay. 
think that's gonna be okay. So these are hash marks from before. I don't think that this is gonna quite go that far. Just because the other pattern was a little bit bigger anyways. So I think we'll just sew this down first and then sew outwards from this. And this is probably just gonna be like where our ending is gonna be. We'll maybe be up here so that whatever I have left is, is what I have left for this part. But that doesn't really matter necessarily. We're more worried about the, the knee pad portion of this anyways. I'm just gonna make a tiny little clip in this corner here for now. And you can kind of see it's just about even with where the end of my pattern is. Okay, we're just gonna do a little reversing here in the beginning. You can see I'm pretty close to the edge. Uh, it's about like a quarter inch, really. I'm gonna shorten my stitch up just a little bit here. And just reverse a little bit. I'm gonna take it almost all the way up to my notch here. And then do a little reversing at the end too. I think what I'm gonna do is sew away from what I already have attached. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is attach this part probably to right before this. I'm actually just even going to mark this slightly before this. Just make a tiny little cut. You could tape this down if you wanted to. Um, you could also put the binding on while you're doing this, that actually would be pretty difficult <laughs> because you'd have to have this part attached also at the same time first so that you can just do everything at once. I'm not gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try to just attach both pieces separately first. Um, okay, so let's just start down here at this corner. Okay, you want to be right on this edge. And I'm just going to walk it forward a little bit. And then I'm even going to walk it back. Just so the machine doesn't take off on me. Right up against the edge, so it's going to be covered with your binding. We'll sew all the way down to that other cut we made in our fabric and then do some reversing at that point. Better off hand walking in if you're worried. 
Okay, so this will actually fit right underneath here. So we'll start from this side in this position so that we can sew outwards to the end here. And I'm just going to kind of see where this wants to stop. To me, it looks like it wants to stop about right there. So I'll make a little clip there. This is the other side of our zippered pouch, and we're going to start on that corner just as we did on the other side, and sew all the way to that slit we made at the end and do some reversing there. We won't show all of this. Okay, so now I'm going to run seam stick or basting tape the quarter inch from here to there and just fold it under ever so slightly because we're actually going to sew it right on top but this will make sure that it stays sandwiched whilst I sew <clears throat> and I'm just barely folding this under like literally it's just going to be about a quarter inch here because I'm going to run my seam right up against the end. So that's what that looks like. So now, <clears throat> we're going to sew this straight to the top of this. You can see kind of what it's trying to do there. <clears throat> Okay, so after much discussion and debate, we decided we're going to basting tape this down. And a lot of that has to do with, because I have a mark here for where my grommet's going to go, and I don't want it to uh, run into my cover here. So now I'm just going to run another piece right over the top of where I just folded down. try to stick this down this is the most important thing is I'm out of the way of this grommet here and this part up here I'm just gonna pull down and see what it wants to do <clears throat> okay See how it's nice and flat to the surface everywhere. <clears throat> I'm gonna sew right along this. Okay, so you can see down here, you're gonna wanna start right at this corner here. Once again, I'm just going to walk it. I just don't trust myself today. Mm. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you also want to make sure you're down here where you're going to seal it with your binding, too. And you're going to go right along the edge here. I mean, Probably less than an eighth of an inch, really. More like about a sixteenth. You're gonna go slow, though. Look at the control of the fabricator, people. It's like the Terminator of sewing machines. Is that what you guys had in mind there? I'm the fabricator. making sure I'm not catching any wrinkles here. I'm actually just gonna walk it past where this wrinkle is. I'm trying to develop even all the way to the end. Oh, 
and there's even a little bit here that needs attached so we'll just attach that and that'll be much easier to reverse on anyways in this chapter we're going to show you how to cut your foam to size I'm just going to go over this with something darker. I'm just gonna see if the, this maybe even need trimmed a little bit. I don't know. We're just gonna see what happens here. A half an inch, maybe a little bit too much for something this small. But I'm like tucking it in so that the trying to make sure that the welt is like facing down. See, I'm just pushing the foam to the edge. That uh, we are going to trim it down some. Well, I don't know. You don't necessarily want this, like where these creases are. Okay, so I'm just going to trim it back a little bit here. And this is just a regular old kitchen knife or a turkey cutter, I guess. Maybe you call it. took a little bit off the top and the front here so hopefully that makes it a little bit better. Now we'll put the foam into the knee pad just to make sure everything fits properly before sewing. In this next chapter we'll be sewing the knee pad to the back panel. Okay so I moved the seam tape from this side to this side because I was wrong about where I wanted that. So it's gonna go up to this line. Okay, so now I'm gonna basting tape this down. So I'm gonna kinda of like fold and find my corners here and use that as a reference this time. I could have done that. I could have done this last time too with this other one, but this has more definitive corners than that does. So we can actually kind of find where we're going to want to stop and start putting little clips. So there's a clip there. You just pinch your corner there. And you can see where I should kind of clip it there. You can do this with almost any boxing and something that's square or a triangle even, just as long as you have definitive corners. Fold that inside out so I can kind of get access to where these corners are going to be. Yep, and those corners land right on the edge. <clears throat> so that's how it should look. Maybe turn it this way a little bit more. Okay, it's ready to be sewn on. Okay, so we're going to stay pretty close to the edge, like right up against the inside small foot. Small of the foot, I'm not sure. Maybe you can call them that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Make sure you're not catching your other cover when you're doing this. So now we're gonna sandwich our actual pad inside here, or foam. Okay, so I'm just gonna run a little piece of tape here on these hash marks because that's where I'm gonna have to top stitch on this one. It's basically the same thing that I did over there on the other one, where I'm just folding it over a quarter of an inch. Oops, I gotta remove, I gotta remove the sticky. Gotta remove the sticky first. And then I'm gonna actually put another piece on there as well. Just like we did over on the other side there. So it's like that. So when I get to that part, I'll be able to just fold it over and sew it. Okay, let's go grab our cushion. All right, so I'm sticking my foam in here. And I'm making sure my wool is like this. For the most part, all the way around it. Okay, so this is a smushing process. You smush your foam back. We'll sew it in and then shift it as we as needed. Okay, once again, very slowly and right on the edge. You need it. You're gonna have to smush your foam bag. It's gonna take a little doing here. And pay attention to where your line is. Kenny's gonna sew very slowly down this side of the bag about halfway, and then we're gonna switch to the other side. We sped this up significantly for time's sake. We're reinserting the bag starting on the opposite corner and Kenny's gonna have to shove all of the foam in there so that he can sew on that outside lip. to get crazy about sealing it because it's going to be sealed with the binding too but you'll want to take your time with this section one. since you have to shove the foam in while you're sewing it kenny goes very slow here all the way down this edge right we're probably going to speed edge. it up after just a couple minutes to save time that's the foam people
When we get to that little snip we made at the end of our panel, we're going to stop. And then we'll show you how to finish the front. But we will do a little reversing here before we continue on. We're noticing that the knee pouch is a little bit loose fitting around the foam. So we're going to add a little bit of batting to remedy that issue. We're going to apply a thin layer of glue to the top of our foam and then apply that batting we just cut out on top. Now that we have our batting adhered to our foam, we'll reinsert the foam into our pouch. This may be a little tricky since most of our pouch has been sewn shut. Now we'll take it back to the sewing machine and start on the side we were sewing at first, the one where we stopped short of our corner. We've sewn down to that little snippet we made in our boxing and now we're sewing over the folded edge at the bottom. You'll want to sew slowly and work out any wrinkles as they come up. When we reach the stitches on the other side, we'll do a little reversing. We won't show all of this. In this chapter, we'll be sewing the binding around the perimeter of our bag. We'll start sewing our binding on the side of our bag and sew all the way around the perimeter. Because the foam is so large in our knee pouch, we'll have to sew much slower when we're sewing through that area. As you can see here, Kenny is using his left hand to squeeze that foam down so he has enough space to sew that binding on. We've sped the next few minutes of footage up to make it more enjoyable to watch. Here at the end we'll trim our binding to size and then we'll sew over that spot where we started and that'll finish us up. We'll also do some reversing here. Coming up, adding the velcro and grommets. So here's our side by side comparison. And now we're ready to apply our grommets. You can see that our bag, like I said, is a little bit smaller than their bag but that's not what's important. The extension out here for the knee is what's what's important. So I think that uh, before we set our grommets, we're also going to put some uh, loop Velcro on the inside of this. Well, we're going to sew this to the back side here. And then we're going to have the, the hook is going to be attached to the actual panel for the door. So let's do that first. Let's cut this down a little bit. It's about yay big. Grab some seam stick here.
Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm a little, about, I don't know, half an inch or so away from where the binding ends here. Okay, so now I'm just going to carefully sew this down. So you're going to have to make sure that you have this opened. If you're going to sew it from this side, you could actually have put this on first if you wanted to too, but since I knew I was going to be able to open the bag and it's not a big deal that we forgot to do that, but I mean, I don't know, maybe I should sew it from the top. Because I'm just gonna be, oh, I can feel it. Okay. Okay, so I can feel where the Velcro is here. You should be able to feel it. You feel the humps right there. It's that long, I can feel it. We'll just see. We'll just see. Told ya. I don't have to be super precise here. Ideally, you should put this on first, people, but. We'll sew this second stitch all the way down the length of our loop and then do some reversing. Typically, you'd want to sew this loop on before attaching your bag so you can sew with the loop on the top side of the fabric. We're sewing with it on the bottom. Okay, so you see the Velcro right there. That's helping me hold this up. And I think I need to go actually put my th thumb here. First we'll want to determine the location of our upper left hand so. corner and the bottom right hand corner down by the knee pad. Then we'll determine the location for the other grommets or push pins depending on what you're using. Okay so now I'm just going to use hole cutter. I'll go right to center. We'll install grommets in all of our locations following the same process. Now we'll take our completed bag and knee pad and install it on the door the exact same way we took it off and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. And here's a look at the finished bag and knee pad installed on our UTV. 
We want to say thank you to Kenny Sims from Sims Upholstery for collaborating with Sailrite on this project. Coming up, a list of the tools and materials we use to complete this project. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of when new videos come available. I'm Seth Grant from all of us here at Sailrite. Thanks for watching.